When the Puritans first came over from England to America, they were really conducting a social experiment in trying to create a society which was based entirely on the Bible. And uh, in this video, I want to concentrate a little bit on looking at the laws and comparing them to some aspects of people that we actually find when you search the Bible and some of the things that Jesus himself said about, um, about people who try to make people come under the law. Now, it would be very naive for us um, to write off the Puritans as a group of wackos who used to just, you know, do strange things like they banned dancing and they banned the theatre and things. But what we need to do is detach ourselves from our own worldview and try to understand where they were coming from in that they were trying to live a life which was wholly um, based on the Bible. Therefore, we see a little bit in the crucible, the names that they gave their children, for instance, were names after, um, you know, the fruits of the spirit in the Bible um, and virtuous, um, virtuous attributes of a person that they would have considered a good thing, such as they would name their children endurance, mercy, peace. And um, all we ever really hear about in history is the more kooky names like um, search the scriptures which was actually a puritan name and fight the good fight of faith which was also a puritan name and my personal favorite if christ has not died for thee thou wouldst be damned um, these were actual puritan names but they were just kind of peculiarities but um, they used to name their children after virtues that they saw from the christian religion one of the things that we could say about the Puritans is that they um, tried to make people into Christians and that's always a very difficult thing when you do that in a society and, uh, and in a few moments we're just going to have a look at the parallels between the Puritans and the Pharisees in the Gospels, um, specifically in the Gospel of Matthew. We mustn't just write the Puritans off though, they gave us a great deal of great stuff, they gave us godliness, they gave us... Um, they gave us piety and they also gave us some great writings if you've ever read the book pilgrim's progress by john bunyan he was a first generation puritan who went over to america to start this social experiment with the rest of the puritans so to just say it was a social experiment that had gone wrong would be to disregard everything that the puritans have given given america today and um you know they worked hard to to plant the seeds of the nation that it is now so we should be grateful um for everything that they gave we can, however, look at parallels between the way that the Puritans are portrayed in Arthur Miller's The Crucible, and uh, we can parallel that with the Pharisees in Matthew 15. Um, if we read this passage from Matthew 15, we'll see that the Pharisees had come to Jesus and they were trying to catch him out by saying, how come your disciples don't follow our traditions by washing their hands before they eat and uh, by, by not doing the things that we do? And um, Jesus turns to them and he kind of uses their own law against them. And it takes a little bit of explaining of the actual Jewish tradition to understand what he was saying to them. Let's just take the time to read the passage here from Matthew 15. Then the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders, for they do not wash their hands when they eat? He answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If anyone tells his father or his mother, What would you have gained from me as given to God? He need not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they do worship me, teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. That was Matthew 15 verses 1 to 9. Now what we see here first of all is the Pharisees and scribes coming to Jesus and saying, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? Because they don't wash their hands when they eat. That when they eat. The elders' tradition was to wash their hands before they eat, and they had a lot of other laws as well. But Jesus answered them, Why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? He was asking them, Why would you follow tradition before you actually follow the commandments of God? And then he uses an example um, for God commanded in the Old Testament, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles his father or mother must surely die. And then he contrasts it to what they say when he says, But you say, if anyone tells his father or mother what you would have gained from me is given to God, you need not honour his father. Now what this means here was that the Jewish people were, were freeing themselves from a law stated in the Old Testament by, by, um, by a loophole effectively. 
they were obligated to give a certain amount of money to the temple um, when it came into their household. But what they could do is they could they they were also obligated to to give some money to their parents. But what they could do in order to get out of giving money to their parents was say, okay, well this is a gift for for God, and I'm going to give it to the temple. But there was also another loophole in their law where if they gave something to the temple, they could actually give it, they, they could actually put it back in their own pocket and then use it for godly gain. So what the Pharisees were effectively doing was taking the money that was due their mother, father and mother and they were saying, I'm going to use this for God's gain. And then they were putting it in their pocket and taking it for themselves. So Jesus was um, was criticizing them as hypocrites. And then he, he quotes Isaiah the prophet when he says, this people honor me with their lip, but their heart is far from me. In vain they do worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Now, what's this got to do with the Puritans? Well, we could say the same with as is true in the crucible. Um, we see on the outside great piety and virtue amongst these people. They call their children endurance. They call them mercy. They call them peace. They call them suffering. Search the scriptures. Fight the good fight of faith. But but as Anne Putnam rightly says in the first act, she says there are wheels within wheels in this village and fires within fires, and everybody is sinning, but they're sinning in secret, and it all starts to come out, and they start to um, use the Bible and the scriptures to start to get revenge on one another. So the whole of this play could be looked at from this perspective of this people honours me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they do worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men.